I'm playing Super Highlight. Lied. One of my most hated, traumatic childhood experiences has a sequel. And this is technically Hide Lied 3. Hide Lied 2 only came out in Japan for computers and the MSX. I've never played this before. I've never even owned it. The only reason I have it now is because recently a friend of mine had a copy of the game traded into his video game store. Which, by the way, if you're ever in De Pere, Wisconsin, check out Game Trade. It's run by my buddy Greg, who also runs BrothersInsanity.com. I have no history with this, so I'm expecting the worst. The intro sequence starts by saying the young hero must awaken as dark secrets have returned to haunt the land. Evil monsters, kill him, got it. Okay, well, at least the menu screen allows me to make my save file and... Oh! There's character creation? With different classes? And randomized stats? That's actually kinda neat. Naturally, I go with the Thief class. Now, here's something I don't get. Compared to everything else, the Thief class has higher hit points, a greater amount of strength, and low intelligence. You know, what most people would call a warrior. This is the opening screen. Take a guess at which character I am. If you guessed the armored Stoic Knight standing proudly here, you're wrong. I'm this dude who looks like every other guy in this city. Unlike the previous Hyde Lide, you can purchase equipment and choose different armors. So I go to the weapons store and, hey, look at that! A dagger! I bought the dagger and put it in my thief's hand. And with that, I can, oh, why am I moving so slow? Oh my god, I'm over encumbered. This is one of the many new systems in Super Hyde Lide. Everything has weight, and your character also has a handle stat. If the weapon's weight is higher than the handle stat, his attack is lowered and he moves really slow. The dagger is too much for my thief. I had to buy a knife instead. So this dagger is too much. But this... Perfect. You also can't sell stuff at the weapon store. You have to go to the general store to do that. So I painfully walk slowly all the way there, which according to the in-game clock, takes an hour to do so. At least I can start playing now. So, killing monsters is- oh! Oh! I have an attack button! Holy crap! I've never been so happy to have an attack button! This is awesome! Since I can't afford any armor, the first thing I do is kill monsters to get their gold. It isn't too bad to do so, and pressing an attack button does feel a lot better than- wait, what? Why'd I die? Okay, starting over, I guess. Grinding monsters to get enough money isn't nearly as- SERIOUSLY! WHAT THE HELL IS KILLING ME?! This is another new mechanic for Super Hyde Lide. Hunger. If you don't eat at certain times of the day, your character gets hungry and their life begins depleting rapidly. This means having to buy rations at the store and carrying them around with you. All in all, I don't necessarily hate the weight and hunger systems. It's supposed to add realism, and it kind of makes me think of the Ultima games. They're not bad ideas, but the way they're done makes them more frustrating and inconvenient to the player instead of adding layers of depth. To give an example of inconvenience, even money weighs you down. Have too much coin in your pocket and you're sagging around like you've got elephantitis. So pretty much the first half hour of the game is spent killing things for money, so you can afford food, so you can be out killing things longer. Also, if you stay up too late past your bedtime, you become sleepy, and you begin dealing zero damage. You rest and save the game by sleeping at an inn, which costs one thousand dollars? I thought I was getting gold. Gold dollars. Alright, got it. Experience points are also like a currency in this game. You spend experience points at a specific shop in the first town to level up, or you can spend them to learn spells. And unless you pick a magic user class, the spells are worthless, except for two of them. 
Cure, and Move, which teleports you back to other cities. So the first hour or two of this game is spent killing things to afford food, using food to be out killing things, and then going to sleep. I did this until I got to level 4. But at least now I have leather armor. Oh hey, it shows up on my character. That's actually pretty cool. I also learned of an item called the Money Changer, which converts your change into higher values so that you carry less. It's just by itself in a treasure chest out in the world. So I go to pick it up and what the? Okay, I guess I'm here now and I don't know what in the world? Why am I here? What is happening? No! Please stop! I don't want you- No! What is happening to me? Random teleports. Because why not? First clue to move on is to find the subterranean city at the graveyard by checking the graves. I found the grave I'm supposed to check, but I can't make out the writing here. I'm too stupid. I'm too stupid to know how to read. Well, the only way to increase intelligence is to kill stuff and level up, of course. So I do that for a bit until I'm level 5 and then... Mm, nope. Still too stupid. Fine then. I grind to level 6 and now I'll be able to... Nope! Still too stupid. Level 7! Will level 7 work for ya? Oh, it does. You have to push the grave. My character was too stupid to push the grave. The subterranean city allows me to deposit my extra change into a bank, where, just like in real life, it'll earn a pitiful amount of interest. I also got some upgrades, and the villagers inform me of their haunted warehouse and the Tower of Havel. The tower is the next destination, and OW GOD MY EYES! This is painful to look at! I seriously cannot tell the difference between what is a wall and what isn't. Towards the top of the tower are these vampires, which to me, look like pterodactyls. Eventually, there's an elevator that you can take all the way up to the 199th floor. And one floor above that is the game's first boss fight, Hell Smoke! And as it turns out, smoke isn't very threatening. Seriously, I killed him with almost no effort at all. He drops a cloud stone, which allows me to walk across the clouds into the Heavenly City. There actually isn't a whole lot to do in the Cloud City for now, aside from buying some upgrades. What I do need to do is walk around the Heavenly Palace to find a hole in the clouds, so that I can SKYDIVE FROM IT! Woo! This is the only way to get to the Water City, by the way. Here you'll find some interesting things laying around. For example, I found an ID card which allows me to get back into the city whenever I want. And I also found a pack of Sega games. If you're wondering what possible use Sega games could have, don't worry, Super Highlight tells you. It's a joke! The king of the water palace wants rare and interesting things. Specifically, he wants a dragon's fang. And there happens to be a dragon living in the caverns below the warehouse at the subterranean city. So it's back to there! You can only get to the caves of the dead by checking this empty treasure twice, which reveals a hidden passage. And the caves are... Oh, they're dark! I'm gonna need a lamp. And lamps cost $10,000 gold dollars. This, of course, means more grinding. You know, this is the same problem that the first highlight had. Necessary grinding. But it's a lot more than just getting experience points this time. Now it's getting a crap ton of money to afford simple items. Or having to be a certain level to even continue the game. This is only done to pad the experience and make it feel like the game is longer than it actually is. It's arbitrary and tedious. I'm not willingly earning new items or equipment because I want them. I'm working to get them, like doing chores. Anyway, I eventually afford a lamp and some oil. I go back into the caves and use the lamp and- Oh good! Yes! Great! Perfect! This is so much better! Thank you, game! I died in here a lot because I had no idea where I was going and I had no idea where monsters were. The worst part is in order to find the dragon, you have to go through a fake wall. So along with already stumbling through the dark, you have to find the right wall to walk through with very little visual cues or hints. I fought the three-headed dragon and I died, because it turns out you cannot open the menu during boss fights. Which means during boss fights, you cannot use magic or items to heal yourself. That's nice and fair. Round two with the dragon goes much better and I kill his ass though. I take the dragon's fang to the king, who lets me into his treasury, where I get Jeem's scroll. I use Jeem's scroll at the empty lake, and BOOM! A fortress appears! And inside this fortress are robots! So I'm stabbing robots! 
with my sword. I feel like there's a distinct disadvantage here. Going through the fortress eventually has me finding a computer with log entries. The log says that a spaceship is stranded and that they're looking for help. To find them, I'll need a space compass and a space suite. Hurry, they say. We have very little time. I'm going to space. Got the space compass, got the space suit, let's do this. To get to space, I have to find the large cracked spot in the world and jump into the planet. And through the planet, I end up in space! And I start running around in space! Screw physics, because video games! To find the ship, you have to follow the direction of the space compass and run in space until you find it, all the while fighting space knights and space babies bundled up like lima beans. You know, all silliness aside, this is actually kind of a charming part of the game. I actually like the idea of wandering endlessly until you find your destination, thanks to an item pointing you to the right way. Replace space with desert, and it doesn't seem so implausible. But between the two, let's be honest, I'd rather be in space than a desert. So the spaceship has more robots, aliens, and penguins. The computer on this ship says that it's too late. All the inhabitants have become monsters because of a being named Kaizak. Kaizak only exists in the first dimension, so I need to transform my body with a special amulet. That amulet is back in the super dark annoying caves under the subterranean's warehouse. Whatever, I got the damn thing. I'm first dimensional now, which I expected to look more like this. That's a smart joke, everybody. This allows me to go into a new realm and use the horn I found on the spaceship to enter the City of Illusion. Here I can buy holy water, which allows me to break a special seal back at the first city. And this is where I screwed up. Because of the weight limit in the game, I was throwing away a bunch of items so that I could carry more rations of food and healing items. In my haste to do so, I threw away the horn that lets you go into the City of Illusion and the holy water that I bought from there. And I can't use the move spell to go back to the City of Illusion because I actually didn't sleep at their inn because I wasn't injured, so the move spell doesn't work. So basically, I can't get back into the City of Illusion, and I can't buy the holy water which is needed to continue the game. I could go on and rant about how stupid it is that the game let me throw away plot crucial items, even though some of the other plot crucial items I can't do that to, but it doesn't matter. My save file is worthless. If I want to beat the game, I would have to start all over. So, I did the only rational thing I could think of. I emulated it! Yup, I replayed the whole damn thing to get back to this point. To be fair, I did do some things to make it easier on myself. For example, this time I have a lightsaber! Breaking the holy seal and going through yet another dark cave that has another fake wall eventually brings me to the next boss, Viralis. Holy crap, remember him from the first game? He's been downgraded! He's also narcissistic now, as killing him lets you get a statue of himself. You use the statue of Viralis back in the first dimension realm at these broken rocks and only at night. This will instantly teleport you to wherever this place is. It's Kaizak's lair, so it's probably in space or something. Inside of this five level dungeon is a trapped fairy without any sort of visual indicator that she's there and she's behind some lock, and freeing her has the fairy join your side. It turns out Kaizak can't be seen with human eyes, so the fairy agrees to reveal him for you. I fight through some dudes, and I end up at Kaizak's lair. He spouts some threats, and then we fight, and he absolutely destroys me. I threw myself at him like six or seven times, and every time he killed me. It's because, and I can't believe I'm saying this, a lightsaber is not the best weapon to use against him. You need a ranged weapon, like the Flaming Sword. And the Flaming Sword is all the way back in the stupid Dark Morales cave. So I go get that and go all the way back to Kaizak and fight him once more. He is a lot easier with the Fire Sword. Hitting his mouth temporarily stops his mouth blasts, allowing me to pop his shoulder pimples. With all four of those destroyed, he's stuck in place. I shot at Kaizak's gaping maw for a while and realized nothing was happening. So I did the only sensible thing left. I jumped into his mouth! And boom! Kaizak's dead! Yeah! 
Before he dies, Tyzak explains one last detail. He created the universe, the fairies, Viralis and his statue, the crystal, which I don't know what he's talking about, and I was made by Kaizak as his antithesis. He claims with his death, so too the world and the universe will die. But then he immediately says that he'll live forever, so I just don't know what to believe anymore. Anyway, he dies and the world pops. Then the fairy and I float around in emptiness for a while, and suddenly the universe comes back to existence. A few glamour shots later, the game ends. And everything's okay, I guess! I gotta be honest. I've played worse. I wouldn't call it a good game at all, but it isn't completely abysmal. That's why my final rating for this game is a spacesuit out of 10. It's clunky, cumbersome, and frustrating, but Super Highlight has some cool moments. The attack button alone makes the game much more enjoyable, and I like some of the little things, like equipment changing your appearance. And I like the concepts of weight, food, and resting, but they weren't executed the best way, resulting in a very user-hostile experience. I also really don't like it how it once again uses force grinding to pad out the gameplay. But like a clumsy spacesuit, it'll get in your way, but you get to do some cool things, like go into space! And the music doesn't make me want to kill myself. And in the grand scheme of things, it is one of the more unique games available on the Sega Genesis. I have no desire to play Super Highlight again. I already beat it one and a half times, but it does have some good ideas. I can safely say that Super Highlight is not the worst Highlight game ever. It's not the worst Highlight game ever because this one is!